kebun. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So, if you've not seen my other videos, I have mentioned quite a few times that I'm going to be at Nam soon, and that soon is finally this month. So, I wanted to start a YouTube series on my channel. I always hear YouTubers using the term series and I'm guessing that just means a playlist on their channel which is a bunch of videos that are talking about a similar topic. So this month once I gather up enough videos about travelling I'll create that playlist and I guess that will be the first series of my channel. If you are interested in vlogs or travelling or parenting which is what I am planning on basing this channel around mainly now please subscribe and give this video a big thumbs up to let me know that you want to see more of these types of videos so enough for the introduction let's just get into this video I am going to show you what to pack in a carry-on bag for a baby when you go on a plane so this is my carry-on bag okay that looks like really big on camera but it's definitely within the size dimensions I guess it still looks pretty big from afar but it's definitely within the dimensions. So when I was reading articles about what to bring on a flight, they were a bit extra. Like an inflatable baby bath and a portable play yard. Yeah, you don't need these. So I'm gonna give you 12 things that are essentials that you will need to take on a plane when you fly with a baby. Number one, food. I know that long haul flights do give you the option to have baby food, which I think is amazing because then it's just one less thing that you have to worry about bringing. I'm just going to bring a few extra snacks for him so that it just calms him a little bit. Who's not calm when they know they have snacks? Number two, baby wipes and more baby wipes and more and more. You can never have enough baby wipe. Now I am joking, I will only be taking one pack. A pack of baby wipes seem to last forever for me anyway. Even though I always lose the pack and then I have to open a new one. There's loads of half empty packs or half full packs, whichever way you look at it. Just scattered all over my house. Number three, nappies. The good thing about long haul flights is that airlines do actually provide nappies for you. But obviously it's best to take it on, especially if you're on a connecting flight, which I will be. Because it's a 17 hour flight, I will be taking about eight nappies. And I think that is enough because I know that if there are more accidents, I know that the airline can provide me with spare ones. Talking about nappies, what comes along with them is nappy rash cream. And obviously the best nappy rash cream cream I believe is pseudocreme. Also side note, I don't know why my pseudocreme video got so many views. People must also love pseudocreme. Can I just say how cute is this little tub? I got this as a sample when I was pregnant. You seem to get like loads of free samples given to you when you go see your midwife and things. And yeah, this was one of them and I'm so glad I got this because you're only allowed so many milliliters of liquid on a plane. Nappy rash cream is included as a liquid. So this is a really good size. So I'm, I'm really glad I was given this. I'm pretty sure you can buy this size as well. It's 10 grams. Number five, milk and bottles. So the last time I flew, I just took a flask and a load of bottles and obviously his formula as well. Because there is a limit for the amount of liquid you can take on a plane, it's best just to go through the check-in with an empty flask and then once you get through, there's always like a Starbucks where the duty free is before you get on your flight and you can ask them to fill up your flask with boiling water so you have it for when you get on the plane. Number six, bibs. Make sure you take plenty of extra bibs. Number seven, clubs. So the last time I travelled, Eric actually thought that I was packing way too many clubs for Edward. But we did actually end up using them all because he did have quite a few accidents, which actually included me spilling a little bit of my ice drink onto him. But yeah, you're always gonna have accidents, so it's always best to pack at least five outfits for a long haul flight. When I say outfits, I mean baby grows. You don't want to be rooting around in your bag trying to find spare socks and pants and a top. It's just easier just to grab a baby grower, grab a vest and you're done. Number eight, plastic bags. So by plastic bags, I mean like baby bags. So you're not like stinking out the whole plane. 
And I always think that just bringing a spare plastic bag with you on a plane is just so easy just to put the spare dirty things that you won't be using for the rest of the flight separate in that bag so you know not to go in that and it's not getting muddled up with like the things that you do need. Number nine, a dummy. Apart from flying, I've never given Edward a dummy. I think that it is a really handy thing to take when you are flying. Just because like, when obviously when you're flying, when you go up especially and when you come back down, your ears pop. And as adults, we chew on chewing gum or we have sweets to make us just swallow more. So our ears unpop. But obviously babies don't know to do this and it is recommended to either give them a bottle when you're taking off or give them a dummy. Number 10, your baby's favourite toy. So Edward does actually have his favourite toy, his comforter or whatever you want to call it when he goes to sleep and that's this thing. I have watched this so many times and I, I still don't understand why the end bits that he chews just stain. But yeah, um, a thing that you should do before flying is just make sure you don't wash it just before you fly because of the smell that's on it. Oh, I don't know. It doesn't smell very nice, but <laughs> that just reminds them of a smell that they're familiar with and it'll just keep them calm. Number 11, a collapsible stroller. So most airlines for long haul flights do include a stroller free of charge so you can take that not on the plane with you but it goes in with your luggage underneath the plane or wherever they put your luggage, I don't know. I won't actually be taking the stroller with me to Vietnam this time either because we do have a spare one over in Vietnam because we're staying with his family and yeah they they have babies too so they're letting us borrow that which is really good but when i go to california in may i will definitely be taking a stroller and i'll be taking a car seat as well because that's another thing that is included in long haul flights number 12 bring a harness i am going to be carrying edward in his harness because i'm traveling on my own and i obviously i need my hands to carry the other luggage but if you don't actually have a harness I know that some airports do have spare strollers that you can use around the airport. So after all that packing, you are all set. You've got your baby and you've got your bag. Also, one more thing that I actually completely forgot, so please do not forget this. It is your passport. <laughs> Those were the 12 things that you should pack for a baby when you go on long haul flights. Also, can I just point out how cute is this little baby girl? Like, it's so cute! And because it is like such a snowy day today, I thought he just blends in. But thank you again for watching, and I'll see you next time. I'm definitely saying that to you guys and Edward since he's just gone. Okay, bye. <laughs>